Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is your girl, Angel Baby. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Okay guys, we are back with Kim's Lost Words. This is an epic read, y'all. Okay, I have all the chapters on this channel. You do not want to miss anything. So make sure you guys are checking those chapters out as well. Actually, you might want to do that first. But, you guys, this read is epic but remember everything in this book is alleged so with that being said let's get to it chapter 15 queen bitch kamora simmons and i went out to have drinks she was looking at me seductively and i was turned on we were gonna go back to my place afterwards but suddenly after a sip of my drink i felt like i had to vomit i excused myself and barely made it to the ladies' room. When I came back, Kamora asked, You feeling okay? I'm fine. I've been under the weather for the last couple of days. I think I'll head home, she said. Your breasts are looking kind of plump there, girl. Embarrassed, I whispered, Not in public. She replied simply, Are you pregnant? I was taken completely back. Why the hell would you say that? She let it sit there for a minute. I bet in her head she was like, wait for it, wait for it. Then it hit me. Shit. She gave me a minute before continuing. So what you gonna do? I didn't understand. Gonna do? If it's not Sean's. Fuck. If it is, with the shock wearing off, the scope of the situation began to take hold. I responded. I better get a test. She looked at me with pity. Damn, girl, good luck. After what he did to Chris, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. The desire that was in her eyes before I got sick was all but gone. As I began to stand, I realized what she said to me, and I paused. She looked at me flatly and said, Ain't nobody stupid, girl. I didn't know what to say. The question still lingered in my mind, despite everything I knew. Did Puff intentionally kill Chris? She brought me back to that moment by saying, go. Not knowing what else to say, but knowing I had to deal with my situation right now. I replied, I'll hit you up. She sighed and simply repeated, good luck. Chapter 16, Christian. The next day, I was sitting on my couch, deep in thought, when my doorbell rang. I went to let Sean in. This was going to be very scary. We made our way back to the living room, and we sat down. Quincy was asleep. Sean seemingly legitimately concerned. What's so urgent? I didn't know what else to do. I just blurted it out. I'm pregnant. The air in the room was as thick as J-Lo. He was quiet. What is he thinking? He asked the obvious question. Are you sure? I spoke rapidly. I was on the pill. I'll get rid of it. I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you know. That's wonderful. This is great. I was so confused. Huh? You're, you're not mad? He laughed. Mad? No. Why would I be mad at this wonderful news? I'm going to be a dad with the woman I love bearing my child. What could possibly be better? He jumped right on the phone and called one of his besties. I could hear Will Smith congratulating him. Sean said, yeah, definitely. Hold on, Kim, baby. I was still in awe of the fact that he didn't get angry. And yes, I will admit, I was sure he was going to hit me. So it was with relief when I replied, yes. He told me excitedly, we gonna have a party. His excitement got contagious. I was getting really excited too. Yes, a gender reveal and he cut me off. Yes, of course we're gonna do all that. But everyone is gonna wanna sleep with you right before you give birth. My heart sank in my chest. Everyone is gonna what? Sean went on with the same excitement. Well, not everybody, you know. Will Jada XX. Sean, 
I'm having your baby. He verbally waved me off. It'll be fine. I couldn't help myself. I just started crying. Sean grew quiet on the phone, then spoke low. I'll call you back. He hung up and took me by the hand. Baby, I never asked anything from you. I tried to see him through the tears streaming down my face. I couldn't believe the words coming out of his mouth. I tried to speak. Sean, he cut me off. I provide everything anyone could ever want. Do you want for anything? Sobbing, I replied, no. But he continued. This is the kind of thing I have to do in order to continue giving you this comfortable lifestyle where you live in the lap of luxury and get to be on TV shows and movies. I know you don't want this, but do you want all this to go away? A whimper is all I could manage. No, he continued softly. Then we got to do this. I said, but Sean... I don't believe in all this spiritual crazy shit. We got here because you're brilliant, not because of the sex parties. He replied, do you trust me? I did. My soul was broken. I did. I responded, yes. He sighed as he said, then let's do whatever we need to do to keep what we have. As I nodded, yes, he pulled me in to hug me. Thank you, baby. We are going to have a beautiful baby. He ordered me some food, and that night I cried myself to sleep. I was going to be gang-banged at nine months pregnant. I want my children out of this life. My child's going to have a good biblical name, a heavy Christian name. They are not going to take his soul. Chapter 17, Broken Promises I don't know how this managed to stay out of the media for so long, but Sean got to the point where he was incredibly abusive and only his inner circle knew about it. The artists were all too afraid of him to say anything. He has gained so much power. No one would say anything. Puff Daddy was a kingpin. This Monday afternoon, Quincy was in school and our son Christian was with the nanny, and I still had to make a living. I still loved the camera and had just been cast for a new movie. Sean was coming over to celebrate with me, just the two of us. I was in the bathroom when he came in. We were supposed to go out for dinner, but he was in a foul mood. Sean yelled, what the fuck? I would have to walk on eggshells as I came out the bathroom, but I found him holding flowers. So I smiled. You brought me flowers? Sean yelled, no. So who the fuck are they from? I was bewildered and told him, honestly, I don't know. Probably just a fan. He threw the attached card at me. I picked it up to read it. Sean, I, he slapped me so hard, I hit the ground. Sean yelled, who the F were you with the other night? I looked down at the card that was lying on the ground next to me, and it read, The other night was amazing. We must do it again. Shit, I tried to explain. Sean, he threw the flowers at me. That's not how this works. You have my child. You don't touch anyone unless I allow it. I yelled back. It was just coffee with the producer. It was nothing. He glared at me and asked, Who the F is this producer? I was trying desperately to calm him down as I responded. From the movie, bae. Calm down. He picked up my coffee mug and slammed it against the wall. Coffee flew everywhere as he yelled. Who the F this nigga think he is? Sean, he's just some producer. We talked about the role Emmy may be starring in another movie. That he wants to produce. I swear that's it. Sean. Sean exploded even more. He wants to put the moves on my effing family at the top of my lungs. My effing family, he flipped the table over, breaking it. It was a heavy table. But Sean is stronger than he looks. I pleaded with him. Sean, please. He yelled at me. What? I tried my best to calm him down. 
he probably didn't know. It didn't come up. You're publicly dating someone else. So he screamed at me. It somehow seemed even more intense. So you didn't tell him, back off? Sean, I didn't. And then out of nowhere, he hit me with a chair. I don't remember anything after that until I woke up in a hospital room. My arm was in a cast, hanging from a sling. My face hurt. My eyebrow was in immense pain, as was my lip. As I came to, the first face I saw was the man that put me here. Sean asked with concern in his voice, How are you feeling? I responded, Stay away from me. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. I, I, save it for the lawyers. Stay away from me. We were in a private hospital room and no one would hear me. I could scream like my life depended on it. But it wouldn't matter. If I did ring for assistance, I wouldn't get it anyway. He kept going. I was just so jealous. You know how I am. You have, he took hold of my left arm the one that was not slung up in a cast. You have our beautiful son, our family. It's just at that point, I had enough. The one you slutted out right before giving birth. Are you fucking shitting me? Stay away from me. Don't come near me or my kids. He continued to plead. I'm sorry, baby, I promise. I'll never put my hands on you again, I swear. I've heard this song one too many times. I spoke through gritted teeth. If you come near me or my kids again, I'm calling the cops. A flash of anger returned. You would use my kid to threaten me? But then he caught himself. I understand you're angry. I glared at him as I cut him off. I'm serious, Sean. He spoke so blandly with no energy. And tell them what? That you had a car accident? They'll pity you that you hit your head. He was going to make me look crazy. They were going to believe him. He was a kingpin. You're a fucking bastard. Sean spent the next six months helping me heal and working his way back into my life and into my bed. I was so damn stupid. And of course, I wasn't cast for either movie. From what I understand, the producer died from pneumonia.